Now I will talk about the excavation on Fuji site in Tajikistan. I am Sadaka Tsukunitake, uh, a chief researcher of Nara National Institute uh, for Cultural Properties in Japan. Uh, this is a joint presentation with uh, Professor Fujagiri Diez, uh, Professor Kunikita, and Professor Sato. Uh, the Fuji site is here, uh, number one, here. Uh, this site is located uh, on the southern slope of the Gisal uh, range uh, at the southern foot of the Lafsha Mountains. Uh, the Lafsha Mountain forms the northern ridge uh, of the Tajik Afghan basin in southern Tajikistan. This site is uh, about 40 km uh, from the Dushanbe. And, uh, uh, the Teshktash Cave, uh, Uzbekistan, uh, the Middle Paleolithic Age, is uh, about uh, 19 km uh, from this site. Uh, this is the position of our uh, excavation. This site is located on the eastern slope of a uh, ridge, uh, above sea level uh, 1,152 meters. Uh, and uh, this site is light, uh, light bank of a stream flowing uh, from a large spring. Uh, this site was discovered uh, by Okladnikov in 1953. In 1978, a large number of artifacts uh, were exposed to, to uh, road construction. You can see this narrow uh, road road. Uh, when uh, this road was constructed in 1978, uh, large braids and points, many, po many points and braids uh, were exposed uh, by construction and a runoff uh, collected them. In 1997, uh, excavation was carried out by a runoff. After that, a small excavation was carried out by a runoff in 2003. Let's talk about our excavation. Uh, two years ago, in June uh, 2019, uh, the academic exchange agreement uh, was conducted, uh, concluded uh, between Nara National Re uh, Research Institute for Cultural Properties, Japan, our institute, and the Institute of History, Archaeology, and Ethnography, Tajikistan National Re Academy of Sciences. Uh, based on the agreement, uh, an excavation was carried out at uh, Fuji site uh, from October to November 2019, two years ago, as the Japan Tajikistan Joint Expedition. This excavation was selected, uh, this excavation area was selected uh, by referring to the result of the excavation of runoff in 1997. Uh, since the artifact distribution density was highest in his uh, excavation between the number two test pit here and number three test pit here. Uh, so we excavated uh, between number two test pit and number three uh, test pit. North to south, nine meter, west to east, uh, three meter. Totally, uh, 27 square meters we excavated. Not so, uh, not so large, uh, but uh, we, we excavated uh, uh, depths 6.5 meter from the surface. Uh, the layer from the surface to a depth of uh, about 3.1 meter. These layers, uh, in, in these layers. Uh, artifacts uh, were uh, not found. And artifacts were found at depths uh, ranging from 3.1 meter to 6.4 meter from the surface. Uh, in these layers, in these layers, uh, about 4,000 artifacts were found divided into four cultural layers. However, the classification of cultural layers may change uh, based on future analysis. Uh, the soil-containing artifact 
uh, is uh, redeposited layers and loam. This is the first culture layer. The first culture layer was about 3.1 meter to 4 meter uh, below the surface. Uh, ground houses, ground houses, the area of burned ground you can see here uh, were discovered and artifacts were found in cluster nearby. So it appears that the artifacts distribution uh, basically preserved uh, the original position. Uh, you can see uh, a different uh, hearth uh, in different level. Uh, in the first culture area. A total of uh, eight ground houses were discovered and they are divided among uh, six levels. Uh, in the first culture layer, a total of about 1,000 artifacts were found. The second culture layer was about 4.3 meter to 5.2 meter below the surface. The distribution density was lower than the first culture layer, and no ground horses were discovered. In the second culture layer, about 500 artifacts were found. This is the third culture layer. The third culture layer was about 5.3 meter to 6 meter below the surface, uh, and about 2,500 artifacts were found. Uh, this layer had the densest distribution in our excavation. Uh, and three ground houses were discovered. Three, three houses. And they are uh, divided among two different levels. And it appears that the artifacts distribution preserves the original position. You can see a a large, you can see a, a large a band bone, animal bone, and in the in horses, uh, we found uh, many charcoals, wooden charcoals, and burned bone, fragment. Uh, uh, this is the situation excavated point and blade. You can see. Uh, a large blade uh, with uh, animal teeth. The bones were flesh and the state of preservation uh, was uh, extremely fine. This is perhaps because the level of the third culture layers is close to the groundwater level and thus a large amount of moisture was contained in layers. The fourth culture layer, this is the uh, uh, lowest culture layer uh, in our excavation, was about 6.1 meter to 6.4 meter below the surface, and about only 20 artifacts were found. This layer uh, was loosest uh, distribution, and no ground uh, hearths were discovered. The soil containing artifacts of the uh, fourth culture layer was uh, decolored and it was affected either by groundwater or by water from the river. Uh, from the first culture layer to the third culture layer, uh, the most conspicuous tool or blank uh, types were blades and points. In terms of blade size, uh, they appear to be a train toward larger size and greater thickness as the layers get deeper. And while, uh, while many blades were found in terms of products using blades as blanks, only in a small number of pointed scrapers were evident in the third culture layer, and, but uh, no end scrapers made on blade. Not clear. Uh, you can see uh, large blades in third culture layers. This is the largest uh, blade in our excavation. The length is 14 cm. Uh, regarding cores, the primary types of our middle paleolithic techniques such as Lobarius core, Lobarius blade cores, like this, and Ladim cores. 
Uh, however, uh, and this is the uh, Lubaris course. However, uh, there seems to be no Lubaris point course in the third culture layer. In addition to those, a small number of cores exhibited techniques characteristic of the upper Paleolithic, uh, such as subprismatic blade cores like this, and bladelet cores of large blend, uh, blade blank. Uh, like this. Uh, this is a uh, uh, bladelet core, uh, so called a building core made on a uh, large blade. This is also a building core for bladelet. This is a point of second culture layers. This is a point uh, third culture layer. Uh, this is the vertical distribution in our excavation and radiocarbon ages. Radiocarbon dating of charcoal samples from the ground houses uh, yield uh, radiocarbon ages uh, 42,000 to 41,000 car BP uh, for first culture layer and 43,000 to 42,000 uh, car BP and 47,000 to 44 uh, thousand car BP for the third culture layer. Conclusion uh, We found about 4,000 artifacts in four culture layers with 11 grand houses stratigraphically. And in terms of uh, blade production technique, uh, we can recognize laborious polyfaceted cores as well as sub-prismatic and narrow-faceted types. In terms of point production technique, there was a minority of typical laborious points, but the majority used as material is a slanted flex removed from radium cores. Distinguishing characteristics of bladelet cores made of large blades with thick ends, so-called bearing cores, we also found. Considering lithic technology as well as radiocarbon ages, we have probably found a set of single lithic assemblage of the initial Upper Paleolithic period in Western Central Asia. In Western Central Asia, uh, there are little sites dating to this era, the Upper Paleolithic period, the initial Upper Paleolithic period, uh, with materials so coherent and numerous. So, evaluation of the materials from this excavation uh, will have uh, immeasurable impact on Eurasian Paleolithic research in future. Thank you very much. Uh, for your attention.